Hope you have your cup of creativity with you. This is Kinda Faith, your host to a cup of creativity in the literary lounge, a place where writing doesn't have to suck. Um, today we are celebrating the last week of National Poetry Month, and I want to talk a little bit about um, two different types of poetry. They're a little bit more complex. I think that they're really fun. It shows your variety and flexibility in your language. And not to mention, it's just, I don't know, it's, they're just fun to, to go to write and read and think about. But of course, before I begin, let's do our little shout out. So the first one is to the Advanced Learning Library, 711 West 2nd Street in Wichita. They provide this amazing recording studio. So that's super great. Uh, the second one is going to be Norm's Coffee Bar at 613 North Main Street in Newton, Kansas. They, one, I love the vibe in there. And two, they offer us um, some space in the back table, the very, very back, which I love because it has this great big window. And why am I talking like that? It's because we have our PMP Writing Society there. It's We meet on the first and third Saturday of every month from, let's say, 12 to 1.30 we focus mostly on adults. Um, uh, for example, there are a couple people that we're talking to about writing children's stories and some other, um, I don't know, some fun projects. And then from 1.30 to 3, we're focusing our work with teenagers. I mean, and this could be honestly any teenager or, or anybody that's pretty much not in my creative writing class. So if they're local, if, get involved. I think this would be super, super fun. And of course, I want to tell everybody about my passion project, which is Faith Publishing, Inc. So we already know I love stories. I, we learn everything through stories. I think our, better, our world will become better if we pay attention to stories and share our stories. So what my publishing company does is that we foster these stories and we, and we want to support anybody that's underrepresented. We want to do those unrepresented voices, the people that aren't going to be heard. You know, maybe you don't need to be traveling to Chicago or L.A. or New York to tell somebody your story. Maybe we can just stay here in the amazing heartland and kind of go from there. So what my, we, we strive to do is that we're striving to build a creative community. And in that community and through various services that um, my company will do, then we can create scholarships and fellowships and eventually like writing retreats and conferences. I mean, oh my gosh, my wish, my wish list is crazy. And I know that my, um, the board of the, <laughs> of the publishing company, I'm glad that they, they get how I work because I'm all over the place. I usually come in, I'm like, Hey, I have another idea. Hey, I have another idea. It's just, I don't know. I love, love what I do. Some of the things that are going on is that we just finished up um, collecting the poetry submissions for the Echoes of the Prairie. So I'm super excited to be going through and sharing um, some of the poems that have been written all across the state. I think that's going to be great. But I also kind of want to focus on some of the services that publishing, Faith Publishing can offer. Um, not only do, are we doing um, poetry contests, which I'd like to expand that soon. Um, we, I'm, I'm in the, in the I guess I'm in the works. I'm in the works of creating an editing course and even a, a creative writing course that you can take online, right? So maybe you don't get the lovely pleasure of seeing me spaz out in my classroom and you know you have to count how many Pez dispensers I have, which I believe is 451. I could be off. Anyway, maybe you don't get that lovely pleasure or maybe that class isn't offered where you are and you can do it online. I'd be more than happy to share what I know and don't know with you. So I think that's going to be great. So we also do editing and proofing. Um, I have actually had previous students from a long time ago have contacted me to help them write and, and proof their college papers. Um, I've had other colleagues. Um, one was the University of Florida. I am probably I have the wrong school there. Um, there was a group of people that were uh, trying to publish their paper in a journal who also asked for editing and proofreading. So I think that's super exciting. And another one that's kind of, I don't know, I've got several projects. Um, what's the phrase? A lot of fire in the, the irons in the fire. I think that's how it goes. Um, one of the things that I'd really like to, I don't know, explore is how to gather memories for people. Recently, I visited um, 
a really close friend and her family over our spring break and it was glorious and I loved seeing her and it just it just she is a sparkly heart right you know those people that you just like them when you just get to see them you just instantly smile on the inside and out she is that person and I love 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 her family but one of the things that was kind of sad it was bittersweet honestly is seeing her husband and her husband is now was just recently diagnosed with dementia and it broke my heart it just it hurt my heart and and it hurt me because he knows what's going on but and so he he mentions or he talks to me like we love sharing stories I love and he's a great storyteller he's a really fun storyteller but he would write he would say something and he's like Kenda I can't remember all of this and so I I got to thinking I think it would be great to record those and so I'm kind of in the works I'm kind of trying to I don't know, iron out a program where we can help people with their memory. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to get your memory back, but what I think would would be cool, though, would be to interview some people. Maybe we could go, you know, I could come over and we could go through your pictures and we're recording you. I think it would, eventually, I would really like to transcribe all of my recordings for my friend and her family and then give that to them. I mean, if they want a book, you know, maybe I could ghostwrite it or maybe we could write it together. I don't know. I think the possibilities are endless. But I do think what's not endless is time. We don't have the time. I mean, we are racing against the clock so we can, you know, get those memories um, and those special stories down on paper or at least recorded so the family won't forget, you know, because you learn everything through your, through your stories through our behavior like for example um and i'll just go off on a sidetrack for a little bit and then i'll get back to i swear i'll get i'll get back to it um one person when my my mom and i were going through um letters and she follows her genealogy and she collects letters and trinkets and la 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 and one of the things that i found absolutely interesting was i think is it great great I want to say two greats, right? Great, great grandmother. Apparently every single spring she would pull out all of her kitchen furniture and she would paint them, repaint them every single spring. And I just thought that was funny. And of course, why do I think that is funny? Is because my mom is notorious for rearranging her furniture, especially when it comes to, when it comes to spring. So you could never walk around at our house you know, growing up because she, you, know, you could never walk in the house at dark. You know how usually you can walk around because you know where everything is. You never know where everything is in her house because she constantly changes the furniture. And so I think of that. I think that's really hysterical. I mean, I, I kind of wish that we would have known why that started. And what was even more, I guess, I don't know, interesting is that my mom didn't know that. She didn't know that about that, um, that family habit until we started looking at letters, which I just, I don't know, something to think about, something to think about. Anywho, let me find some some centeredness. <laughs> let me see if I can get on track. So please, please join me with the daily mantra. Yes, say this to your dog. Say it to your cat. Recite it to your family. Say it out loud. I don't know. Maybe try a British accent. Mm, whatever. Whatever to have fun, right? So here's the mantra. Today, I will face fear. Today, I will be brave. Today, I will struggle. Today, I I will grow. Today, I will get through this. Huzzah! Yay! Huzzah! Okay, so now that I'm a little bit more with it, (laughs) I want to talk about um, two of my favorite uh, types of poetry, my forms of poetry. And the first one I like to talk about is um, a golden shovel. And a golden shovel poem, it's it's, um, actually, it's from Terrence Hayes. And essentially what he ended up doing, let me see if I can find my little notes here. There we go. My notes. Um, Terrence Hayes wrote a poem off of another poem by Gwendolyn Brooks. Gwendolyn Brooks, also um, a poet laureate, wrote this poem called We Real Cool. And what was kind of neat is is, it's actually a really short poem. And I, I think it's, um, it, I think her poem originally was called the, Gov- the Golden Shovel. The Golden Shovel was the name of a pool hall. And so what she ended up doing is that she found, she was watching, right? Because I've talked about this before. She's observing. She was watching these kids who skipped school in order to play pool. And she ends up writing something. 
Okay, let me see if I can find this poem for you. So the original poem, like I said, it's actually called, um, it's just We Real Cool. And the first line shows up the pool players, seven at the golden shovel. The golden shovel was actually the name, again, of the pool hall. So here is this, it's a super short poem. It goes like, we real cool. We left school. We lurk late. We strike straight. We sing sin. We thin gin. We jazz June. We die soon. Okay. That is the original poem from Gwendolyn Brooks. Now, what's brilliant is that Terrence Hayes took that same spool, that same poem, and he took every single line of the poem, and he made it the end of his original one. I know that's going to sound kind of weird, right? So here's how it's going to go. So have the first line. It would be we real cool. So we would be the last line. Of your first poem or of your of your original poem then real right real would be the second the second word of the original poem that that word real is going to be the last word of your second line and then it just keeps on going right so instead uh, so remember the original one is we real cool his line is when I am so small my dad's socks cover my arm we Cruise at twilight until we find the place the real men lean, bloodshot, and translucent with cool. I don't know. I think this is just the coolest thing ever. I think it is so, so cool. You get to decide. So you're kind of basing your work off of somebody else. So I kind of like the idea of like a daisy chain or a piggyback. So how you start this is that you can either use just one line. It could be the whole poem. You get to decide how long or short your poem is going to be, right? So, but whatever poem or line, it could be even a song lyric. I really like using those. You're going to put that in quotes at the very top, and that's essentially going to be the, the title of your, of your poem. Then, after that, then you start putting the original poem, right? You're going to type it out, and it's going to be vertically, so that way you know that that first line is going to, the end of that first line will have the first word of the original poem, right? So if you use, I don't know, um, the raven, right? Edgar Allan Poe, got, you know, the famous guy who needed a hug, right? So let's say the whole first line is, once upon a midnight dreary, I pondered weak and weary. So the first word is once. You would use the word once. At the last, right, the last at the end of your first line. And then it just kind of keeps on going and going and going. I will actually um, put some examples out there. And one of, the, one of the reasons why you do this, not necessarily, you know, because it's cool, because it is. It's kind of a source of inspiration. And, I don't know, you get, I think you can, be a, you can become closer to this. You know, you can become closer to the writer. You can become closer to the idea. Um, one of the things that I've been trying to play with, I think is a really cool idea, is um, maybe you have a family member that wrote poetry. So I'm a fourth generation teacher, not by choice. It just sort of happened. <laughs> um, anyway, my grandmother was an, was an English teacher. And when she passed away, my mom and I, we went through all of her, obvi obviously all of her belongings. And I found poetry everywhere. Oh my gosh. Oh my, I can, it, it's funny because now I can see some things where I, I may have gotten that idea or maybe I didn't know. It was just sort of passed to me subconsciously. She wrote on the backs of checks. She wrote on little slips of paper. She had poetry all over the place. And one of the ways that I, I guess, wanted to pay homage to her is I did a golden shovel with off of her poems that I found. So, I don't know. Maybe it's a passion, a little another passion project I can publish or write down, you know, a, a poem that she wrote and then I could create a golden shovel off of that. I think it would be really neat if a, f a whole family could do that. I don't know. The, like I said, the, um, the inspiration is endless. I, I think, I don't know, if you're, if you're looking for a challenge, um, try out a golden shovel. I have had students who, wow, just blow me out of the water. And instead of having, you know, using the original poem at the end of each line, I've actually had a couple students that will do the same for the first and the last. Yeah, so for example, if we use that once upon a midnight, 
dreary, right? And the word was once. They would use the word once at the beginning of the line and at the end of the line. And then, of course, I see it and I get goosebumps and I'm like, oh, my God, you're amazing. And then we just sort of go from there. So uh, try out a golden shovel. I just I think that you'd really, really enjoy it. The other type that I would like to the other type of poem that I would like to bring out is a spoken word. Now, I don't have I check out spoken word on YouTube. Um Button Poetry is probably one of my favorite YouTube channels. There's so many out there. There's so many. Um, so you can kind of figure out, I don't know, spoken word it, It's a kind of a culmination of many things. It can be performance art. It can be rap music. It can just be regular poetry. It, it's, it's kind of a mishmash of everything. Um, it has also like elements of competition and audience participation. Sometimes... Um, they are performed at poetry slams, right? And hi, me being completely like green and you know, I'm like slams. Who's slamming who, right? So you could you could totally like I don't know, talk trash the whole entire time, or you can say I've seen where it's just you're just sharing poetry. You're just sharing poetry and you're sharing ideas, and then the audience gets to determine you know which is the best one, right? Um, and sometimes I I believe the word slam, um comes from like the from the audience honestly the audience gets to praise or destroy a poem which i think is oh <laughs> so hunger games-esque i don't know talk about bravery <laughs> it's, it's one thing it's it's brave to, sh to write and share it's another one to you know write and share and perform whoa performance is insane um i will just direct you to several um poems and several um poets um because it, it, it's just so vast i what i would say is that a slam poem is it can be political it can be artistic it can be personal and usually you will find a theme or something to say that's really really important to you um i've heard poems that have to do with a missing identity meaning that something that was traumatic and they're still looking for themselves i've seen something funny where it comes to like they're still talking about the land before time and how you know their childhood is like a lego right um and then i also see stuff like um complaining you know don't complain because of this or somewhere in america which is i is oh my gosh that's from the El los angeles brave new voices team i believe is old um where they talk about oh somewhere in america we can't teach a banned book oh somewhere in america we have to worry about i don't know dress code or you know you see where i'm getting at um you could do about bullying it could be about oh my gosh self-image it could be about so many things so I would, I'm just going to give you like a little um, excerpt of one of my favorite po um, spoken word poems is uh, Shane Coison. He is, oh my gosh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I, I someday to be, you know, hope to be a writer like him. He ends up doing, a whole, uh, to this day, is a poem about bullying. And, um, you know, just fact check and see what other people are doing doing you know be empathetic so i'm just going to read you just a little little section and just to maybe get you inspired right so shane coison to this day when i was a kid i used to think that pork chops and karate chops were the same thing i thought that they were both pork chops and my grandma thought it was super cute so she let me keep doing it and because you know they were my favorite and it wasn't a big deal well until i was seven years old and there was a bad, a bad fall caused me to bruise my upper arm and shoulders rather severely. And I didn't want to tell my grandma what happened because I was afraid that I'd get in trouble. Because I was playing somewhere where I shouldn't have been. And then one day in gym class, the teacher notices a bruise and I was sent to the principal's office. Not long after that, I ended up in another small room with a really nice lady who asked me all sorts of questions about my life at home, and I, I saw no reason to lie because it was pretty good as far as I was concerned. So I told her that whenever I'm sad, my grandmother gives me karate chops. Well, this left 
led to a full-scale investigation and I was removed from my grandparents' house for three days and then returned when my family asked me how I got the bruises. And news of this silly little story eventually spread through the school. When the students finally caught wind of it, I earned my first name, Porkchop. I'm going to stop there because I think everybody should experience that. So get online. Check out Shane Poison. Check out Uli Francisco or Sarah Kay or Taylor Molly or I mean there's so many things out there to, to hear and to read and to become inspired right not everything has to come from a book not everything has to come from a video I do think that everything needs to come from a soul I think that we need to connect I think that we we miss each other and I hope that you can find some and, and be connected to some of the work that is out there. So I will put this to a close. My name is Kendra Faith with a cup of creativity in a literary lounge where writing does not have to suck. I truly, truly look forward to reading what you write. Until next time.